Okay. All right, I got six o'clock. We will call the meeting to order. Um, we have everybody but uh, Jake present uh, for this evening's meeting. Um, looking for someone to approve the agenda. So move. Got a motion from Bruce. A second. A second from Cheryl. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. Uh, we'll go to new business. Truth in taxation hearing. And once you're ready to know, I'll let you uh, yeah, kick I'm us not, off. This is my... <laughs> all right. Okay, um, so I will uh, turn it over to Steve Pumper. Um, so you all, so um, I'll let you introduce yourself because we have a new board member um, that was not here last year. Um, so I'll let you introduce yourself and uh, to walk through the truth and taxation information that you have. Okay. Do we have the presentation up there, Richard. I will You're put it so. right up here. Yep. <laughs> Great. You're going to be my little um, mouse mover. I okay? I will be. Yes. Yeah, fantastic. Great. Um, like when we put the superintendents to work, right? Yep. Yes. Well, I'm Steve Pumper with PMA Financial. Um, our company um, works with over 200 districts in the state of Minnesota, um, primarily investing money for districts, including your district here as well. Um, and uh, we also act as a municipal advisor on issuing bonds um, for a lot of districts. We don't do that for your district, but we do for many districts as well. And one of the things we also offer as our services to um, provide truth and taxation, uh, uh, truth and taxation hearings, the presentation itself, and your district has um, decided to use us for the last several years, actually more than that, I believe. Um, so with that, we'll get on with it, and I'll kind of tell you why we're here. So every district in the state of Minnesota is required to have a hearing, a public hearing, before they take action, the board takes action on the final certification levy. You, you certified a preliminary levy back in September. Tonight, you'll be actually taking action on the final levy, which is, um, has to be done before the end of this the calendar year, um, and uh, that's what will happen tonight. So the requirements is really easy of what you have to talk about in the, in the hearing is you have to talk about the, the, the current school year budget, so that's uh, this year 22 budget. You need to talk about the proposed tax levy that you're going to take action on, and you also um, need to allow public comment um, at the end of the presentation. So when I'm done, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Chair, and we'll see if there's anybody public here who wants to make any comment, but that's one of the, that's one of the requirements. So um, what happens, it's a long process. This actually really starts back prior to June as the district and the, the administration is really focusing on putting together a budget. Um, but in June, the state of Minnesota, the Department of Education collects data um, that your business manager and your superintendent will provide to them. In August, you as a board set a date for this tonight's hearing. So that could go on, on the notices to, to all the staff or all the citizens, I'm sorry. In September, you certify the preliminary levy. In November, um, everyone who lives here in the district should have received a parcel specific notice saying it here's um, the proposed taxes for you for this next calendar year. And then in December, you have your public hearing and you certify the final levy. The next slide is just kind of showing you an example of the notice that you all should have received in the mail and all the district residents would have received in the mail. The one piece I will point out on it, this is not your specific, but it's a sample uh, that everyone receives throughout the state is that you're going to also have um, the tax and jurisdictions from your county on there and from your city on there as well. And then some people even have a special taxing district. Tonight's focus as board, as a school board, you are only um, talking about the school district portion of their taxes. So that's what we're focusing on today. So when we get to the first requirement, and that's talking about the budget, we're looking at this current year school year budget. Um, so this actually, honestly, where the was the levy that you levied last year is what's funding this year, but we do look at this as one of the requirements. Your district uses six separate funds um, as defined by the state of Minnesota. Um, it's called uh, fund accounting, and the three funds that are have asterisks by are the general fund, the community service fund, and the debt service fund are the three funds that actually have a tax levy component to them. So we'll be looking at those as well. If we look at the budget summary, this would have been the, the budget that the, the district would have approved back in June of last year. Every district's required to approve a, a budget before June 30th. And if you look at the six different funds, you'll notice that you pretty much are balanced throughout all the different funds. Your general fund, which is your which are your largest fund, we'll look at that a little bit more, a little closer. Um, that's really what's funding all your pre-K through 12 educational expenses. Um, that's just slightly uh, a deficit budget. So you have about $150,000 deficit budget that was approved um, back in June. All the other funds are relatively balanced. 
So when we look at um, where the revenues come by fund, again, 82% of all your revenues are going straight to the general fund. Again, that's um, what, what most people would, would say is your you know, K through 12 educational expenses, but it's not just instructional expenses. That would include your building expenses, it would include your utility expenses, your transportation expenses, everything that goes into running a, a school system. If we look at the next slide, and it shows where all the um, money is coming from, this one actually is normally pretty stable from year to year, but there's a little variance this year from last year, and I'll explain why. So the budget that you have for 22 has 60% coming from state aid, 19% um, coming from property taxes, 13% from federal. Um, last year, uh, this presentation, you were at 65% um, state aid, and you were only at 2% uh, for the federal aid. And I bet you, if I ask each one of your board members, you probably know the reason why, and that's because of all the COVID relief funds you were receiving from the federal. So that's kind of skewing this, this, this year from what it's like in the past. But what's fairly consistent is the uh, amount of property tax is, is fairly consistent. Last year it was 21%, this year it's 19%, again, skewed a little bit by that federal piece. But the majority of your funding sources come from outside local taxes. So that's really kind of the, what I would, just want to let you, you know, know as well. If we look at expenditures by fund, because you're balanced, um, this is going to mirror your revenues. So you have, you know, 76% of your money is going to the general fund and the revenue, 76% of your money is going to expenditures and et cetera, all the way through. The piece that board members can um, look at, which I would like to point out, is how do you spend your money within your general fund? And again, these are categories that are defined by the state, so every district has to report the same. But if you look at your biggest piece of the pie, which is your elementary secondary instruction, and we add to that vocational education instruction, special ed educational instruction, and instructional support services, so those are all really what we call classroom expenditures, um, you're at 63%. So 63% of all your money is going directly into the classroom. Um, the rest of it's going for your utilities and your you know, facilities and your busing and um, <clears throat> your administration, et cetera. But 63% of this district is going directly into the classroom. Um, uh, a highlight, um, again, just want to mention this, that uh, you were upgraded, your district um, was upgraded from A2 to A1 by Moody's back in June of 2019. Um, and that's a great thing. Um, it, uh, as you went to sell your bonds last time, the higher rating you have, the lower interest cost you're going to receive um, when you go to sell. So that's a fantastic thing and your district's doing a good job to have that type of rating. So how do we get to A0? <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't go to A0, you actually go to a double A3 would be the next one. Okay. And that would be pretty tough for a district your size to, um, to achieve. It's honestly not so much about your performance as a district when you get to that double A size, it's about what you um, unfortunately can't control and that's the size of your district. Um, and what's happening within your community itself. So if also paint would become really big and had a huge tax base, then you could probably get, you know, get to that, that level. But I don't see that happening. So that's outside the, the board's control. So now we'll switch to the second item, and that's looking at um, the taxes that you're going to levy or um, take action on tonight um, for taxes collectible in um, 2022. I told you it's split into three different funds, your general fund, um, your community ed fund and your debt service fund. So the first piece we look at is your, is your general fund, the largest of it. And we have the different categories on here that are composed of the levy. I'll look at some of the changes on that on a different slide. But if we look at the total, you'll notice that um, it's going down $44,000 in total for taxes that you're levying in the general fund next year compared to what you did this last year or a decrease of 2.7%. If we look at the next fund, which is your community ed um, fund, your community service fund, there's hardly any change at all. It's going down $1,000 or 1.2%. So that's really consistent from year to year. And then we look at your last um, item, and that's your debt service fund. So that's paying off the bonds that were used to um, do all the nice facility improvements that we've seen. Um, that's actually going up $7,000 or just over a half a percent. And that's based on, um, in this case, really not your debt service schedule as much as, as, as some adjustments from your rear, which we'll look at really um, closer in a different slide. So when we add all those three funds up, uh, you'll notice that your total levy um, is going down $38,000, $450 from last year, or it's going down 1.3%. Okay, so the total dollar. 
I told you we'd look at some of the major changes, so let's look at those. So the capital projects referendum, that's an amount that you actually, it's a fixed rate that you, your voters approved, and that's being levied on the total net task capacity of your entire district. And that's, net task capacity is based on what is all the assessed value of all your properties worth. So since that's gone up, which I'll show you that trend in a little bit, it means you actually get a little more revenue. So you're giving, you're going to tax, um, the taxpayers are going to pay $11,000 more um, because of that um, increase in value in the district. Your operating capital, however, is going to go up $9,765, but most of that is not additional money for your district at all. It's actually because the value in your district has gone up and the way the state calculates how much aid they're going to give you and how much the local effort of people have to pay. Because your value has gone up, the state thinks that you have more value in your district so you can pay a higher portion of the share. So they, were, they are not going to give you as much aid on the capital side of things. So last year, you received 60% um, aid. I actually kind of have this backwards. I mean, you're levying 40% uh, of it last year. This year, you have to levy 44% of your total money. So that means last year, you received 60% of your capital was coming from state aid. And this next year, you're only going to get 56% um, coming from state aid. Um, if we look at um, um, a few more changes, your reemployment, you're actually going down $4,000. Last year, you had an increase in that category um, based on the, the number of people who would file unemployment or reemployment, as they call it now. So this year, you're reducing that amount. So it's going down $4,000. Your career in tech is going up because of a more qualified expenditures that you can code to that. So you're um, you're you're levying a little bit more in that, and then your long-term facility maintenance dollars are going down a little bit, and that's just because of your decrease in enrollment, which is consistent amongst almost every district in the state. Um, on the um, <clears throat> debt excess, I told you your debt was going um, up just slightly. Um, what happens is, um, and I've been I probably explained this before, but I just want to refresh everyone's memory. When you have a, a debt service schedule, so you're paying off the bonds that you use to you know, conduct your facility improvements, the state mandates that you um, levy 105% of the total principal interest that's due for the next year. And the reason they do that is to make sure that a district has enough cash on hand to pay those bonds when they are due, the principal interest on those bonds, because sometimes you don't collect um, the total levy that you that you levy for, because some taxpayers don't pay their bills on time, right? And so um, they mandate that you levy 105%. However, if everybody does pay their bills on time, that extra 5% accumulates over time, and um, eventually you need to give some of that money back to the taxpayers based on, because you only can keep so much of that excess money. In this case, because you're selling some new bonds, you've had some additional debt, you have to kind of uh, build up that fund balance. So that's why you're, you're collecting an extra $7,000 this year. And then the last um, item, which has been probably the, the biggest I've seen as I've gone around um, the different districts in the state, is you have prior adjustments, and this time it's going down by $64,000, primarily to do with enrollment. So when, when one of my earlier slides, when I said that the, district, or the state of Minnesota collects data from all the different districts, one of the pieces um, of information that districts supply to the state looking forward for a three-year period of time is what's their expected enrollment going to be. So you know, people are always guessing what that's going to be. And so a couple of years ago, when you said what your enrollment was going to be, nobody had anticipated COVID and what was going to happen because of COVID. So because of that, your levy was, you know, like, last year and the year before was based on a certain enrollment number. And so you levied more money than you needed to because the number of kids that you ended up with was less. So now you have adjustments that's giving the money back to the taxpayers. So that's why you have some adjustments this year. So how does this um, affect um, all your taxpayers in the community? Well, the total levy and dollar amount is going down by 1.3%. The referendum market value and the net tax capacity, so two different ways you measure um, property wealth within the district, they both are going up um, really close to the same, one 5.15% and the other 5.68%. What that just means is that people's values of their homes or businesses are, are going up in value. Some of that could be because of increased property growth as well, like if you have a new development in your district, but most of this is just because of the assessed values going up. So if we look at that, if we do the math and all that, what it means is that if you had a $100,000 home last year, 
and your home is still valued at $100,000, and I realize it might not be, it could go up, but if it was the same, your taxes actually would decrease by $25 or go down almost 8%. And you can see as you go down the different values, you know, how that looks. Um, obviously, as your home increases in value, your tax decrease uh, correspondingly um, is going up as well. And the next slide after that um, shows other properties as well. So this first category was the last slide, the residential homestead. But commercial and ag land is going to have the same effect. Everyone's going down as long as their property values were to, you know, to stay the same. Okay. Um, we talked a, a little bit about this, um, other factors that could affect um, the values or the, the taxes on your specific piece of uh, property. One is that it's assessed value. If it increased uh, significantly, your taxes you know, might not go down. They actually could go up depending. So if you had a $100,000 home last year and all of a sudden the valuation by your county assessor took it to $150,000, well, your taxes you know, appreciably could have gone up as well. Um, the other piece we want to talk about is uh, um, I mentioned that on that statement, there's other taxing entities as well. So you've got your county and your city on there too. The next slide is really um, just for residents to know that they're, they're, um, the state of Minnesota does have a property tax relief program. Um, if you go to um, the website that's listed there, they have the forms available and you may, you know, depending on your income level, you may qualify for tax relief um, that way as well. This, this final section, there's not, not too many more slides left, but this is kind of a new piece I wanted to share with board members um, as we do this presentation. I just want to kind of break it down for you. So if, if we take your average value of a piece of uh, a residential property in your district, it's, it's roughly $225,000. So a $225,000 home for taxes payable in 2022 for next year, they're going to pay a total of $758 uh, of taxes uh, related to the school district. Okay. The colors here represent where, where are those dollars coming from? How do we break out that $758? Well, this really small little bar down below that you hardly can even see, we had to kind of write over it, $6 of that is coming from your voter approved operating levy, which was done a while ago and has kind of been sucked up by changes um, that the state has made. But you, you have $39.25 left of a voter approved operating levy. So $39.25 times how many pupils or how many students you have. So that creates $6 worth of tax burden for an average house. This, this uh, light blue piece, that's your board approved levy. And that's $724 and that's the same for every single district in the state. And almost every single district in the state, the board has taken that authority to levy that. So you don't need voter approval for that. Um, that's how much they have. And so that generates $301 of tax impact. This large green bar right here, that's the $326 for your average home. That is for your facility improvements that you've done, plus your capital projects levy. So that's voter approved. So all your voters, your residents had an option to weigh in on, do we want to you know, tax ourselves or not? And because they said yes, that's creating $326 of tax impact. And then this last $125 is just kind of a catch all for everything else that's part of the, the levy process that um, just goes into the whole levy calculation as well. Um, as we look at this chart right here, we're showing the last seven years, um, what, what would it look like if, if again, a, a, piece, um, a piece of property had the same value on a $225,000 home if, if in 2016, this blue line, is, that's how much they would have been paying in school district taxes. In 2022, here's how much they'd be paying. So it's almost the same. If the value of the home stayed constant for a seven year period of time, and I know that's not always true, um, your taxes are roughly the same. This spike right here is when you went out to the voters um, in 2019 um, to, you know, to, to sell your school building bonds. And that's why your taxes rose there. The green bar represents the agricultural taxes that are being paid. And you'll notice that they have gone down quite substantially, even with the voter approved um, bonds. And that's because of the, it's called the school to ag credit. And what that means is that the state of Minnesota is paying uh, a large portion of their taxes on bonded debt for ag property. So not, not their own house, they're, they call the house garage of one acre, but all the property that's being farmed, 
um, they get a, they get a big credit. This next year for, for taxes payable in 2022, the credit is 60%. So again, the state is paying 60% of that tax, tax tax burden. In one more year, taxes payable in 2023, um, they'll be paying 70% of that. And then that's capped out unless the legislature makes another change on that. If we look at your the total, just the constant value of the levy, you were levying just over $2 million, about $2.1 million in 2016. And now you're just under the $3 million level right now. And again, you see that same um, bump in taxes that were collected and paid 2020 because of your successful November election. Valuation trends, looking at both referendum market value and net tax capacity. Again, this is what's showing all the property in your district, how much the county assessor valued it at back in 2016 to what it looks like in 2021. And you can see definitely a steady growth up to the right. So people's properties are increasing in value as I'm sure all you know with your own pieces of property that you live in here. Um, then looking at again, just kind of in bar chart form, uh, again, having a, a home that's constant, a $225,000 home, back in 2016, they were paying $727 worth of school district tax, pay 22, $758. So very consistent, very constant over that period of time. And then the next slide will show the same information, but just on ag land as well. So this is how much a farmer was paying per acre $3.76 of school district tax seven years ago, and now that's gone all the way down to $2.83. Again, mainly due to the school to act credit, act to school credit. Um, so with that, uh, what the board uh, needs to do is take action on a final dollar amount that you're going to certify. Um, at tonight's meeting, it has to be to the penny. It's what you will send to your county auditor. The, the maximum amount that you can certify, what would be recommended to you to certify, is this amount right there, the $2,920,744.83. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Chair for any public comments or yeah, I'll stand for questions. We are uh, open to public comment and questions from the board. Anybody have any questions? For Steve. Thank you. Very clear Thank you. as usual. Yes, there you are. Very nice. Yep. Thank you. Um, with that, we're going to be uh, looking for a motion to approve the paid 2022 levy of $2,920,744.83. So I have a motion from Bruce. A second. A second from Cheryl. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. And just looking for a motion to adjourn. I'm only adjourned. adjourn. <laughs> I second. <laughs> motion from Cheryl, second from Megan. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. I don't take a belt here. Do we have to go home? Yeah, right. God, can we go home? <laughs> I'm going over to the gymnastics. Yeah, I was going to run over there. Just check it out. I got, I got some new. I know. Happy holidays. Wait. Yes, happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Nice to see you guys. Take care. My, uh, my wife and daughter are over there watching gymnastics right now, too. So.